It's Brian and Pam. Why, yes it is. Yes it is. You know who that was? Who was that? That was the Cheshire Voice Singers, Pam Landry. They are awesome. They are. I wonder if they're doing a Christmas show. We'll have to find out. They're like angels. <laughs> they, they, they sound like angels. Welcome to episode 23. Where? I'm um, here. Oh, this is episode 23 of the Smith & Landry podcast, not a podcast? You've got it correct, Oh, Brian that's Smith. amazing. I'm, I'm going to give a listen. <laughs> um, How much do does you know, it cost? T- it's free. It's free? I was just getting to that. Oh, okay. Shh. Um, do you know what our email address is? It's free. Oh, um, our email address. Uh, it's got something to do with ice cream, soda, uh, as, as requested from our friend Kelly at Kelly's Cone Connection. You're getting closer. In Connecticut. Ice cream soda CT at gmail.com. That's correct. Uh, yes. And subscribing to our YouTube channel is free. Go to YouTube and search ice cream soda CT. All one word. All one word. And Pam, I've got this special deal right now. Every single one of our listeners, including this one here has been upgraded to gold. Ooh. <laughs> what does that mean? It means they're gold. <laughs> They've been upgraded to free gold status, Pam. That's great. Just you, before the holidays. You get a free set of knives yes. with that? <laughs> First place, new new car. Second place, set of knives. Nah. Third place, you're fired. <laughs> great, great movie. Week. Brian, it's Thanksgiving week. Thank goodness. Thanksgiving. Yes. What are you doing for Thanksgiving? I'm eating. Really? Yeah. Where? How about you? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Whatever you're cooking, I'm here. I'm, I'm over here. <laughs> uh, the weather forecast. I know um, that that's something that everybody keeps their eyes on. Uh, Thanksgiving weather forecast for the greater New Haven area looks to be a mix of sun and clouds, windy and mild Thanksgiving day, Brian. Highs near 50. Oh, really? That's yeah. not Thanksgiving. That's that's Labor Day. That's I'll, that's Fourth of July weather right I'll there. I'll take it. Yes. Uh, Black Friday looks to be sunny, but cooler highs in the low 40s, and then Small Business Saturday mainly cloudy, high 40s. Sunday, uh oh, could bring mixed precip and a high near 40. What do you mean? What what is mixed? Uh, could be rain. Could be a little of that. S- 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 what? S- no. no. Oh. Probably not along the coastline though. Good. Um, But getting back to Thanksgiving, uh, we don't know this yet because we're recording this episode 23 before Thanksgiving. The wind could be a problem for the Thanksgiving Day Parade in New York City. Yeah, you know, a few years ago, a woman was hurt when the cat in the hat balloon hit one of the... Light poles. Yes, and, uh, you know, it knocked it over. She got hurt. Otherwise, they haven't stopped flying those balloons. I think the last time they did was in the early 1970s. Yeah, it's been a really, really yeah. long time. So um, it's a possibility that they may not fly Thanksgiving morning. But it, it's too bad that there's a precedent set with a woman getting hurt by the cat in a hat, which by itself is a hard thing to explain to the emergency room. Really? All right. How'd she have? She got hit by what? But the other thing is, it'd be kind of fun to watch a windy day in all those balloons. I mean, here in Connecticut, we could theoretically have one of those balloons fly up here. How great would it be to have SpongeBob SquarePants flying over New Haven Harbor? That would be pretty great. Snoopy flying over the Merritt Parkway. I think that, I, we need that. We need that to cheer up our state. Felix the Cat. <laughs> Is he still a balloon? I think so. <laughs> he was one of the originals. Before we move on, I just want to ask this quick question. Have you noticed there's not as much of a of a stir, a hubbub about Black Friday this year? On the contrary, Brian. You think it's ramped up? Oh, gosh, yeah. There's less time between Thanksgiving and Christmas this year. It's hysteria. It's, for some reason, I, I thought that the, the, the zenith, the, the high point of Black Friday hysteria was two years ago. And last year, I didn't think it was as as much of a, a fuss. And this year, it seems to be a bit less of a fuss as well. I don't know. Maybe you're just not uh, paying attention to the news. Maybe, 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 maybe that could be it. Coming up today on episode 23, we've got special guests, Brian. Special guests? Oh, uh, uh, yes, yeah, special guests, Pam. They've, they've all been upgraded to gold status. Do they know that? Well, they do now. We ruined the surprise. Okay, well, Brian, we have Dave Eisenman. He's with the Orange Lighted Tractor Parade. And do you know Dave used to be on our show? He yep. was Ice Cream Dave. He used to uh, come up with original ice cream flavors for us on the program. I remember. Also, Yet Auger, the president of the Cheshire Chamber of Commerce. Oh, she's terrific. And Jean Lewis from the North Haven Winter Festival. When is that? 
That's this weekend. But it's not winter yet. No, it's not. It's it's like the 4th of July outside. It's the North Haven sort of winter festival. Do they have a calendar? Shh. It's, it's not winter. It's the late Shh. fall festival. Just go with it. All right. Well, we'll, we'll have to send them a letter. Uh, is her name Jean? Yes. Jean, this may disqualify your gold status. <laughs> Abuse of seasons. Jean, don't listen to him. So it's a winter so it's a winter festival. That's correct. In, In the fall. Okay. I'm I'm writing that down, Jean. <laughs> You're going to get a notice. So we'll hear from all of those special guests coming up today on episode 23. Yes, the Smith and Landry podcast, not a podcast. It's a podcast, not a podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Smith and Landry podcast, not a podcast. My name is Brian Smith. And I'm Pam Landry. And together it's Smith and Landry. Now we do the part of the program for you and our special gold status listeners. It's called, <laughs> and you've been upgraded to gold status. It's time for our feature called Celebrity Birthdays. Celebrity Birthdays! That is a special song recorded by Taylor Swift, just for our program. Celebrity Birthdays! And who's the first birthday out of the birthday box, Pam? Clay Aiken, Brian. Wasn't he from that, uh, wasn't he from that American Idol program? I believe he was. Whatever happened to him? Well, he's 41. Other than that, I can't answer that question. <laughs> he, he's, give him a call. He's probably sitting by the phone right now. I haven't been following his career. Clay Aiken, come on, call me. I'm available for fundraisers and bar mitzvahs. Call me. <laughs> Sarah Silverman, the comedian. She's 48 years old. Here's one, Brian. New Kids on the Block, remember them? Yes, I do. Are they jo not so new anymore, are they? No. Jonathan Knight... From NKOTB, as we say in the hood. Nikindubaba. 51 this week. 51. That means one of the new kids in the block is just four years away from getting all those mailings from AARP. <laughs> That's right. Ben Stiller turns 54. Now, see, I thought he was older than 54. That, yeah, me too. Ben Stiller turns 54 this week. Don Cheadle, great actor. He's 55 this week. Canadian John Stewart turns 57. Amy Grant, 59. Can I just say John Stewart looks older than 57? He does. As soon as he got off the show and stopped dyeing his hair, yep. he, he, the he beard. looks older, yes. It's not quite a Letterman beard, but it's a beard. No, it's not quite the Santa Claus thing. Or no. the, or the ZZ Top beard that yeah. Letterman has yeah. going. Now, what did you say? Amy Grant is 59? She's 59 this week, yep. Bill Nye, the science guy who I met in Disney World, he turned 64. Billy Idol arr, is 64. Comedian Howie Mandel this week turns 64 years old as well. Mandy Patinkin, very talented singer, actor. Princess Bride actor. What else has he been in, Pam? Juggler. <laughs> <laughs> He's 67 this week. Actor Ed Harris turns 69. Bette Midler, 73. And she just keeps going and going and going. Brian, she's the wind beneath my wings. <laughs> she is. From the band Deep Purple, bassist Roger Glover turns 74. Randy Newman, 76. Felix Cavalier of The Rascals turns 77 this week. Tina Turner is 80 this week. Have you heard that Tina Turner taught Mick Jagger how to dance? I have heard that. You have heard? I didn't hear that, but... Uh, but this past weekend, I did a show with a Rolling Stones tribute band, and they told me that that's where he learned his moves. Yeah, I read that. And there's also a Broadway play opening, if it hasn't opened already, about Tina Turner's life. Oh, that's right. Impressionist Rich Little turns 81 years old this week. And then there's director Woody Allen. He's 83 this week. This week, blues musician John Mayall turns 86. Now, Br John, Brian, John Mayall, I saw him in concert when I was in college. He was old then. I got to tell you the truth. I thought, I, I didn't know he was still alive. He's still alive. But it says so right here that our producers put together uh, in this in this package of celebrity birthdays that he's still alive. So our I believe it. Our producers do a great job, our, don't they? Our producers are all right. A little extra in their checks this week. Yes, a little double their pay. And the winner, Brian Smith, of the Celebrity Birthdays Derby this week is Motown Records founder Barry Gordy Jr., who is 90 years old. Barry Gordy Jr. is 90? Yes. It's kind of tough to be 90 years old and people are still calling you Junior. <laughs> 
I would imagine. Hey, Junior. Hey, kid. Come over here. I guess it makes him feel young, though. I, you know, that's true. That's it's probably good therapy. You know, uh, I enjoy celebrity birthdays. I, I love listening to this podcast now that we've all been upgraded to gold status. But I, I can't wait to, to listen about this lighted tractor parade coming up later on in the program. Oh, yeah, we have Dave to talk about yes. that. Uh, Orange is having a... They, they put Christmas lights on tractors. Who knew that was legal? But they put Christmas lights on tractors and have a tractor parade in Orange coming up on Sunday. More on that coming up. Right now, Brian. Yes, what's next, Pam? It's time for this week. Yes, What? In music history. Ah, my favorite part of the show. I'm just going to sit here and listen. This week in music history. Maybe I'll talk. <laughs> Good idea. All right. Do we have that song? <laughs> Where's that Taylor Swift song? What Can we song? Hear it? The, the, doesn't she sing This Week in Music History? This Week in Music History. Oh, I love that song. Listen to that. Anyway, uh, thank you, Taylor Swift. This week in 1960, Elvis Presley started his six-week stay at number one, with his song, Are You Lonesome Tonight? This week in 1964, the Shangri-Las went to number one with the teen death song, Brian. Oh, oh that's a beat. Look out, look out, look out! <laughs> Leader of the pack. This week back in 1968, can you believe it? The Beatles' White Album was released. Also this week in 1968, Glenn Campbell started five weeks at number one with Wichita Lineman. What a great tune. This week back in 1969, the Beatles were at number one with their single, Come Together, on one side, Something on the B-side, two hits, one record, and it became the Beatles' 18th number one single in the United States. And this week in 1971, Sly and the Family Stone went to number one with Family Affair. 1974, this was the week Elton John's greatest hits album was number one. This week in 1976, Brian, the band, they made their final performance, The Last Waltz. It was held on Thanksgiving Day at the Winterland Ballroom in San Francisco. It was this week in 1982 that Lionel Richie was at number one with his song, Truly. <laughs> Now, also in 1982, Michael Jackson's Thriller album was released. Oh, really? All right. After Halloween. For some reason, I always thought of that as a Halloween release. Great album. This week, back in 1986, Bon Jovi. They and he were number one with You Give Love a Bad Name. In 1992, The Bodyguard, a movie I still haven't seen and never will, opened <laughs> nationwide featuring Whitney Houston and Kevin Costner. And this week, back in 1992 as well, Whitney Houston started a record-breaking 14-week run at number one with the song I Will Always Love You from The Bodyguard. 1994, this week, the Eagles started a two-week run at number one with their album, Hell Freezes Over. And that, Brian Smith, is This Week in Music History. That's it? In a nutshell. Oh, I wanted more. Other things happen, but, uh, you know. Now, do we have a song for This Week in History other than music? Oh, wait a minute. Do we have Taylor Swift's version? Wait a minute, let me see. Let me, let me yeah. go into the archives okay. here. Okay, there it is right there. Stuff that happened this week in history. That wasn't music. That wasn't music. But still made headlines. But still made headlines. And someday they'll make a song about it. And someday. This week in 1925, the Grand Old Opry, one of the longest lived, one of the longest, <laughs> not one of the longest lived and most popular showcases for Western music, began broadcasting live, livid from Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> This week in 1941, FDR, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, signs a bill officially establishing the fourth Thursday in November as Thanksgiving Day. Well, he waited long enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's Tuesday. Well, actually, he had changed it. Okay. Because it was the fourth Thursday in November. Then he changed it to the third Thursday in November, which is like... I don't know, 1938 or something. So it was like the people earliest freaked out because they didn't buy their stuff yet. Black Friday, I know. And then people weren't happy, so he changed it back to oh, the see. fourth. I know it's complicated. A little, little wishy-washy there. <laughs> and back in this week in 1942, uh, Casablanca, a World War II era drama that starred Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman, premiered in New York City. Was that your Humphrey Bogart impression? Yeah, it's like Humphrey Bogart and Sean Connery. I was going to say, it sounds Connery, like Sean yeah. Connery. <laughs> of all the bars and all the places. <laughs> and Brian, also this week in 1942, Jimi Hendrix was born in Seattle. He was born on the same day that Casablanca hit the movie theaters? Well, the same week. The same week? Yeah. Uh, it still freaks me out just a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's Brian. 
Ben and Pam. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time Brian, for the... Brian. What? The mic is over there. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was talking into the lamp. And now, ladies and gentlemen, <sighs> it is time on the Smith & Landry podcast, not a podcast, to let you know where all the local events are happening this week. And I'll give you one word, locally. But there's a lot of tree lightings this week. Let's find out what's going on around our part of Connecticut. And we start out with, are you ready, Pam? Local events going on locally. <laughs> it's called what? Local events going on locally. <clears throat> it's time for local events going on locally. Let's go to North Haven. What's happening this weekend? I see they have something happening on Saturday and Sunday, Pam Landry. North Haven, Brian, you called it. Halfway Home Rescue of North Haven. Yes, Saturday they have a pet adoption event at the Mew Haven Cat Cafe on Welly Avenue in New Haven from 11 till 2. For that one, you should call the cafe for a reservation ahead of time. Sunday's event is at Pet Supplies Plus in Orange this week. That's from 11 till 3. And bonus... They also have pet photos with Santa there from noon until 3. Well, once Thanksgiving's over, of course, it's time for festivals. North Haven has a festival happening on Saturday. Yes, Brian, as you noted, it's not winter yet, but this is the Winter Festival at the North Haven Fairgrounds. It's happening this Saturday. And to tell us more about it, here's Jean Lewis, one of the organizers of the event. Come join us for the Winter Festival on the Fairgrounds. Saturday, November 30th from 10 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. on the North Haven Fairgrounds. There will be free games and crafts for the children all day long and local vendors to kick off your holiday shopping. Live entertainment all day includes Nappy's Puppets at 10.30, Spotlight Stage Company at 11.30, Mrs. Claus will be reading stories to the children at 12.30, and Santa himself arrives on the fire truck at 1 p.m. Admission to this fun event is just the donation of a non-perishable food item or toy for the local food and toy banks. We look forward to having you kick off the holiday season at the Winter Festival on the North Haven Fairgrounds. And from the North Haven Winter Festival on Saturday, we go to Bradford and go to Thanksgiving in Bradford. A lot of towns, Brian, have these um, turkey trots, these 5Ks on Thanksgiving. Branford is one of them. They've got the Shoreline's largest Thanksgiving Day turkey trot, the annual 5K and Kids Fun Run. It is uh, Thanksgiving Day at Walsh Intermediate School. Proceeds benefit the Soundview Family YMCA and Branford Rotary Club. On-site registration is at 7.30 a.m. And Friday, it's the Branford Annual Holiday Tree Lighting and Parade. That's on the Branford Green Friday from 6 p.m. till 7 p.m. And let's stay in Brantford, and Monday, there's a pet event happening in Brantford. Benefit for the Brantford Animal Shelter, home for the holidays cocktail party. It is Monday night from 6 till 9.30. It's apps, it's specialty drinks, desserts, and an amazing raffle at the Home Restaurant on Main Street in Brantford, brantfordanimalshelter.org for info. Now let's stay on the shoreline from Brantford to East Haven. Let's find out what's going on there. We start with the East Haven tree lighting. That's on Saturday. One till five at the Town Green in East Haven. Saturday, hot chocolate s'mores, cookie decorating, crafts and food trucks. Santa arrives at two o'clock and the St. Bernadette School Choir will be singing. Tree lighting is at five o'clock. Also in East Haven, Pam Landry, our friends at the Trolley Museum, the Shoreline Trolley Museum, have some big doings as well. Starting this Friday, Brian, it's Santa's Trolley. Running through December 22nd, take a ride into the past at the Shoreline Trolley Museum. Your kids can visit with Santa. Sounds like a ton of fun. And for more information, shorelinetrolley.org. And one more thing on the shoreline, and for our friends in Guilford, delete, delete, delete those angry texts because we're going to talk about you now. It's time for Guilford's holiday event. It'll be happening at the Henry Whitfield State Museum. Yes, Brian, stuff going on at the Henry Whitfield State Museum this Friday from 10 to 4.30, their Harvesting History event. And then a week from Friday, December 6th, from 4 to 8 p.m., they have their Firelight Festival. And now from Guilford, we head up Route 10 to Cheshire, <laughs> Connecticut, where the entire town is waiting patiently to listen to us to find out what to do for the holidays. Well, there's the first annual Holiday Fair Craft and Vendor Show happening Saturday from 9 until 2. That's at Cheshire High School, Route 10, and it's sponsored, Brian, by the Class of 2023. Also, Sunday in Cheshire, 
Pet Photos with Santa from 11 till 2. That's at North Point Pets and Company on South Main Street in Cheshire. And the town of Cheshire has a Chamber of Commerce. And there's a great party going on there. This is a good deal. If you have an office or if you work with some people and you want to do a holiday party but not go through all the trouble of all the planning, then you can be part of the Cheshire Chamber of Commerce holiday party. It is Thursday, the 5th of December at the Wallingford Country Club. And here's Yetta Auger, the president of the Cheshire Chamber of Commerce, to tell us more. Hi, Pam and Brian. It's Yetta from the Cheshire Chamber of Commerce. We are so excited that you both will be our auctioneer and DJ at our holiday party, December 5th. Wallingford Country Club. You're going to be providing us with some great dancing music to kick off the holiday season. We also have some great items for our live and silent auction. We have Martina McBride tickets. We have tickets to the Yard Goats, Quinnipiac Hockey and Basketball, Red Sox tickets, along with a lot of gift certificates for restaurants and some great craft items. And our local businesses have donated some some fantastic uh, gifts. So please call us at 203-272-2345 if you'd like to come to the party. It is open to the public and we are selling tables of 10 if you'd like to bring business clients or your employees. So give us a call again, Cheshire Chamber of Commerce, 203-272-2345. And I look forward to seeing everyone. That is Yetta Auger. She's the president of the Cheshire Chamber of Commerce. Did, did she just say that you and I, that at Smith & Landry, were going to be at the big Cheshire holiday party? That is correct. I, well, that's nice. I'm looking forward to that. That's great. What day and where are we going to be? <laughs> it is Thursday, December 5th at the Wallingford Country Club. Oh, that's right. I better write that on my calendar. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so besides that, do we get food? I think she'll feed us. That's a great event. When do we talk about the big tractor parade in Orange? Is that coming up later on? It is. All right. Well, right now we go from Cheshire down the road a piece into Hamden and find out what's going on with their Thanksgiving. Another Thanksgiving Day race, Brian, the ninth annual Run Turkey Run 5K. <laughs> it's at the Multi Sports Academy Sanford Street in Hamden. It's Thanksgiving morning, starts at 7 30. And uh, for more info on that, teammossman.com. And from Thanksgiving in Hamden to lovely Sunday in Hamden, let's find out about Sleeping Giant. It'll help with your digestion. Sunday, the 1st, the Sleeping Giant Park Association Holiday Hike and Social. The hike will be followed by refreshments, carols, a warm fire, and good cheer at the pavilion in the picnic area. Uh, you should meet Sunday morning at the bulletin board by the kiosk near the park entrance around 1.30. The hike should be about an hour and a half. For info, you can check their website at sgpa.org. You know, I'm all sick of all these cities and towns having all this physical activity for Thanksgiving. That's a little too much, you know what I mean? Look, we earn this. It's Thanksgiving. You want to have somebody come out, have a couch and a fireplace and a TV, you'll have a big crowd. So from Hamden, Pam, let's go down. Wait, this just in. Oh. Mm. <clears throat> we have one more event in Hamden to talk about for this weekend. Breaking news. It almost broke my neck. This Friday at the Eli Whitney Museum and Workshop on Whitney Ave in Hamden, it's Mr. Gilbert's Railroad, an annual exhibit of American flyer trains. It's very cool from noon till 5, and you can go to their website for more information. It's free, by the way. Now let's go from Hamden, take the rest of Route 10, down to New Haven to find out what's happening in the big city. Shop, shop, shop. Shops at Yale. Have a big weekend combining Black Friday with Small Business Saturday and also including Sunday, not to leave Sunday out. They've got a series of things going on, free parking at participating lots with a minimum purchase at retailers, ice carving demos, hot cocoa, holiday tunes, roaming yuletide carolers, customer appreciation giveaways, storytelling with Santa events, and more. Find out more at theshopsatyale.com. From the shops at Yale, let's go out to the water. Big, long-time tradition happening in New Haven starts now. 
It's great. Um, if you've never been, you really ought to go. The 25th Annual Fantasy of Lights. Oh, and if you've been, you should go again. It's going on now through December 31st at Lighthouse Point Park. It's presented by Goodwill of Southern New England. It's absolutely beautiful. You don't have to get out of your car. You can drive through these twinkling, beautiful light displays. And uh, for more information on this, prices and hours, go to goodwillsne.org. You know, Pam, this is something. Have you been to this in a while? I it's, have. It's, it's beautiful. The, the family will love this. All those colored lights, it's beautiful. Seeing the Festival of Lights at Lighthouse Point Park, Pam, better than bringing the family to go see Santa Claus get a hernia operation. Where is that happening? It's not happening. Don't be fooled, my friends. Although other cities and towns have their Christmas tree lighting happening this weekend, New Haven's it's a week later. Yeah, Brian, the New Haven Green Tree Lighting happens Thursday the 5th of December from 4 till 8. That's at 250 Temple Street. All kinds of stuff going on. Rides and a petting zoo and touch a truck and crafts and visits with Santa. Musical performances and food trucks, too. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful display, Pam. Much better than bringing your kids to... Okay. Go see Santa Claus have a hernia operation. Okay. So from New Haven's tree lighting ceremony... We now go to Orange to find out what's happening this coming weekend. And do we get to talk about the lighted tractor parade yet? Yeah, but first. Uh, oh. First. Not yet? Thanksgiving Thursday, the Orange Rotary has their 5K turkey trot run and fun walk, Brian. That starts at 8 a.m. at the High Plains Community Center on Orange Center Road. Info on the Orange Rotary Facebook page. That's on Thursday. What about Sunday? Do we get to talk about the lighted tractor parade yet? Not so fast. Oh. Something else that's going on on Sunday at uh, Maple View Farm on Orange Center Road from 10 till 4.30. It's Christmas at Maple View Farm. Lots of craft vendors, something for everyone. You can uh, do a little holiday shopping there, a lot of handmade stuff. Very nice people there. I know those people. They're nice. I wonder what they're doing with their tractor on Sunday. Well, did you know that there's a lighted tractor parade going on? No, heck no. Yeah. It sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. It's Sunday the 1st, the annual holiday festival and tree lighting, the town of Orange. The tractor parade goes down Orange Center Road. Well, we've got Dave to talk about it. Dave Eisenman, also sometimes known as Ice Cream Dave when he used to be on our program on the radio. Dave is one of the organizers of the Orange Lighted Tractor Parade. So is he Lighted Tractor Dave now? At 4.30, we leave the Orange Community Center, take a right, go up to the town green. Just after the green, we will take a left and park the tractors on the back side of the green. So anywhere along that route is a good place to see the parade. Then shortly after that, everybody walks around, looks at the tractors, has a good time. Then Santa will be coming via fire truck. And once Santa arrives, they will light the lights on the town green. So after the tractors and Santa arrive on the town green in Orange, Orange officially turns on the lights at around 5 o'clock. Now this is the third year for the Town of Orange Lighted Tractor Parade. It's a farming town there, so tractors and Christmas in Orange seemed like a natural fit. Most of the tractors that we have are all antique tractors. There's a lot of people in Orange that collect antique tractors. So three years ago, we got the idea that there's a tractor parade in Greenwich, New York. Somebody posted the video on Facebook and tagged a bunch of us and said, you know, we should do this for Orange. So we got permission from the first selectman, Jim Zioli, and we put it together. We got a lot of people that said they wanted to do it. About a week before the parade, we were thinking, we hadn't heard a lot from a lot of people, and we were thinking, you know, if we only have three or four, it's not not going to look as good. But day of the parade, we all lined up at the Orange Fairgrounds, and within 20 minutes, 25 tractors showed up. So then we knew we were going to have a good time. Brian, as Dave tells us, it started out as a parade just of tractors with Christmas lights, but now it's a lot more. Yes, the first year was just tractors, and then last year they showed up with a bunch of hay wagons and also decorated, kind of making floats out of them. More the merrier. They've got generators running on some of them. They've got inflatable Santa Clauses, inflatable snowmen. And Pam Landry, with all the work and all those tractors, we asked Dave if there's a trophy for top tractor or happiest hay wagon. No, just bragging rights. <laughs> and honestly, the, the kids love it more than anything else they, they to see the looks on their faces as they're walking around in and out of the tractors when they're all lit up it, it's really fun so orange does their tree lighting and their tractor parade on sunday west haven it's traditional 
Friday in West Haven from 2 to 8. It's the annual tree lighting and holiday festival on the green. And Brian, Santa will be there at 6 o'clock. Oh, great. Don't say it. I'm glad he's not... <clears throat> I'm glad he's not having a hernia operation. There'll be music, local entertainment, free crafts for kids, free photos with Santa, food trucks, crafts, artisan vendors. Please bring a non-perishable food donation for wheat. That is the West Haven Emergency Assistance Task Force. If you had a hernia operation, I bet everybody in the hospital would know about it. Hey, you know who's just down in the ER? Santa Claus. Are you done? Are we done? No. Oh. <laughs> Not that done. Oh, I see. We don't say goodbye yet. Done hey. with the Santa hernia thing. Oh, yeah. What are you talking about? Milford. Oh, Milford. Milford has a big, big, big celebration going on this weekend, right after Thanksgiving. Well, Brian, on Friday, it begins around 2 o'clock in the afternoon with the Bavarian-inspired outdoor Christmas market at the gazebo on the green for all your food and holiday shopping. And, of course, the Festival of Lights and Tree Lighting on the Milford Green begins at 5.30, runs through 7.30. There is live holiday music and a winter wonderland presented by Milford Bank. All kinds of things for the kids. And the tree lighting kicks off at 6.30 with Santa. Oh, good. He's out of the hospital. Arriving in a fire truck. Why does he always come in a fire truck? Well, think about it, Pam. Is he going to call an Uber? Good point. You know, do you want Santa Claus showing up at your event in a 1998 Honda Civic? I don't think so. I guess if you want to make an entrance, sure. right? Sure. Fire truck. Sure. You've got paramedics all over the place just in case you need a, okay. a, a hernia operation. All right. <laughs> hey, oh, this Saturday, by the way, the day after Black Friday, yeah. is Small Business Saturday. Yep. So that's the day to go out and spend a lot of money at your local businesses run by your neighbors and your moms and pops. By the way, Brian, did you know that Black Friday is the busiest day of the year for plumbers? <laughs> I'm afraid to ask. <laughs> I'm afraid to ask why. why. Thanks to all the food we eat on Thanksgiving and house guests stressing out the plumbing system, uh -huh. the company Roto-Rooter reports that kitchen drains, garbage disposals, and yes... Toilets. Oh, you're grossing me out, Pam. Require more attention the day after Thanksgiving than any other day of the year. Yeah, remind me what day not to be a plumber. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, hello, yeah. This is the family down the street with 45 people staying over. You got somebody in the office over there at Roto Rooter? No, we're closed. We're, we're all out at the hospital having hernia operations. And away go troubles down the drain. Oh, that's gross. So, Brian. Yes, Pam Landry. I've gathered some Thanksgiving fun facts for you. Oh, that's great. Other than the plumbing thing. Yeah, that's gross. <laughs> Are you ready? It, oh, it's like a game show? Thanksgiving fun facts! Excellent. Is there money involved? No. Okay, Brian. Yes, Pam Landry. There are four towns in the United States that have the word turkey in them. Oh, boy. Do you know what they are? Uh, number one, Turkey Town. <laughs> Bam. Number two, Turkey City. Bam. Number three, uh, Turkeyville. Bah. I, I give up. Okay. There's Turkey, Texas, and really? there's Turkey, North Carolina. Okay. And then the other two are Turkey Creek, Arizona, uh -huh. and Turkey Creek, Louisiana. Well, let's not forget Turkey Hill Road in Orange. And there's a Turkey Hill in Westport, That's too. That's where Martha Stewart used to live. Yeah, but those aren't towns. Oh, you're right. Those are roads. Okay. All right. I win 20 bucks. All right. Another Thanksgiving fun fact. Try to collect that 20 bucks. Okay. Do you know the year the tradition of football games on Thanksgiving began? 1998. Incorrect. Oh, okay. I'll give you a hint. The first football game was Yale-Princeton. Oh, man. How far back does that go? Yeah. I don't I give up. When, when was the first traditional year of watching a football game on Thanksgiving? Brian, the first football game on Thanksgiving was 1876. In the 1800s? <laughs> yep. You're kidding me. Yep. Yep. And by halftime in, what year was it? 1876. And by halftime in 1876, all the dads in the stands were all falling asleep and passing gas. That's true. <laughs> and one more Thanksgiving fun fact. Oh, great. I love fun. And facts. Well, this is a multi-fun fact. All right. Americans' favorite Thanksgiving foods, Brian. Okay. By percentage. By percentage. 
Can I guess number one? Yes. My favorite food for Thanksgiving? Yes. Reese's peanut butter cups. That's not on the list. Oh, well. All right. So you Try again. So you've got some other ones then. Uh, favorite Thanksgiving foods? Turkey. Mm-hmm. Turkey. That is correct. 39% of Americans say their favorite Thanksgiving food is turkey. Is that number one? Oh, Brian, I just realized something. What's that, Pam Landry? This is This Weekend Food. <laughs> Kind of. I'm so glad we had Taylor Swift record those songs for us. Americans' favorite Thanksgiving foods, Brian. Uh, Number two? Number two, cranberry sauce. It's on the list, but only 3%. Uh, Twix bars. Not on the list. Oh, man. I think you're thinking Halloween. I'm talking about Thanksgiving. Oh, maybe you're you're Thanksgiving. (laughs) All right, number two is stuffing. All right, that makes sense. Stuffing and turkey go together. Twenty-three percent of Americans right, say that's thanks. their favorite Thanksgiving food. I would have lumped them together. Okay, next. Mashed potatoes. That is nine percent. Is that on the list? It is. Oh, cool. But there's something at twelve percent. Twelve percent of Americans say this is their favorite Thanksgiving food. It's either green bean casserole or Kit Kat bars. Neither. Um, sweet potatoes. Pumpkin pie. Ah, yes. Pumpkin pie. Sweet potatoes is on the list at 6%. Okay. So it's funny. I mean, you know, you, you talk about me saying you know, Kit Kat bars, Reese's peanut butter cups, but pumpkin pie is also something we hand out at Halloween. You do? Doesn't everybody? <laughs> Brian? Yes? Whatever it is that might be your favorite Thanksgiving food. Uh-huh. I hope you enjoy plenty of it this oh, Thanksgiving. I, I, I hope we. I, I hope there's plenty of it around too. I I, I certainly do. I, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. What are you having? Food. All right, I'll be over. Are we done? Are we finished? Is is it time to say you know g- 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 goodbye? Oh, we're done. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, goodbye. <laughs>